This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Five minutes till the main event. Is this the way my life was spent? Now the winter of my discontent is about to turn a new year. The minister, he's pleading me to save myself. He's reading me apocalyptic verses from a book. I squint my eyes to look at him and said, Save your stories. Save your please. There's nothing left. There's nothing here for me. You will listen. Hello and welcome back to the How Will I Die podcast starring Nicholas Howe. It's me, Nicholas Howe, here to talk about death and dying and stuff, but with comedy. Welcome to the one year anniversary episode of How Will I Die. One year ago today, I kicked off the show and it has been a thrill of a ride, even though it's only technically been 23 episodes, plus like seven extra episodes. It's been a whole thing. It's been a whole year, honestly. But we're in 2020 now, and that year is behind us. So this week's episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to do the usual story thing, history, all that fun stuff, and then at the end, I have a special segment for you guys. Plus, I'm doing a giveaway this episode. If you want to know what it is, stick around and find out. Our first Nicholas of the day is going to be called Cliff Nick. Now Cliff Nick is 30 years old. He's a venture capitalist entrepreneur type. He's invented a few things but mostly it's a family business and he's been in it since he was like 15 and he is currently on a road trip with his two best buds Wes and Matt. Now Wes and Matt are pretty chill dudes. They're just kind of around for some reason pretty much all the time. So Cliff Nick and his buds are driving through the mountains just having a blast enjoying life honestly. They're rocking out to the radio. They're singing along to Queen. You know you gotta get some Queen. Some Galileo, Galileo, Galileo. Magnifico. All of that. Cliff Nick is driving this van through some steep mountain terrain. What Cliff Nick didn't know was that there's a heavy population of animals out on the streets. The reason that's important is because as he was driving, he rounded a corner going a little bit too fast for a mountain road. But what can you do? It's boring in the mountains, even with Queen. Especially with Queen, actually. Because not all of your attention is on the road when you're jamming along to Queen. So as he turned this corner, as he turned the corner going much too fast, he saw an animal in the middle of the road. It was later found out that it was actually a bobcat in the middle of the road, which would have sucked to hit. Instead of hitting the animal, Cliff Nick jerked the wheel and was sent flying off the side of the mountain. Using quick action and a lot of adrenaline, Nick, Matt, and Wes all got out of the van as it was plummeting and managed to latch onto a branch sticking out of the side of the mountain. However, the branch wasn't strong enough for all three of them to hold on to. They debated back and forth a little bit, but Cliff Nick knew it was his fault that the van crashed off the side of the road. It was his time to go clearly. He also had seen the bobcat and figured he would much rather die from falling than die from being eaten by a bobcat. So after a final goodbye to his friends Wes and Matt, he dropped, gave a salute, and plummeted to the ground. Interestingly enough, that's not actually what killed him. See, something had happened with the vehicle, it had hit the ground in a certain way that as soon as Nick hit the ground, the vehicle exploded around him. And that was the final killing blow on Cliff Nick. Our second Nick of the episode is going to be named Hearty Nick. Hearty Nick is a 52-year-old actor of the stage and screen who is currently in a very, very important role on Broadway. This character that he's playing is unlike anything he had ever played before. While the normal Nick is a very serious person sometimes, Generally, Nicks are kind of funny, at least we try to be. So taking on the most serious role in a drama was out of the ordinary for Hardy Nick. Perhaps that's what led to 
the events that unfolded the night that he died. You see, Hardy Nick was giving a monologue on stage in the middle of opening night performances when he started to sweat a little bit. He also had some dizziness, a headache, and he was feeling a little nauseous, but this was his big break in a serious performance on Broadway, which isn't known for, first of all, very many speaking roles. Also, he was nervous because this was something that he had never really done before. An opening night gives you jitters no matter how comfortable you are on a stage. It really wasn't until the pain in his arm started that he realized that something was a little bit off. The monologue he was doing at the point he was at in the show, nearly three quarters of the way done, actually ends his character's arc and takes him out of the show until the very last scene. Because during that scene, the character suffers a heart attack. Fate may have a hand at play in a lot of situations, and in this case, fate had a hand on Hearty Nick's heart. As he finished his monologue, he dropped to the floor as lights went down, signifying the scene was over. But when scene change was set to happen, Hardy Nick didn't get up. People were rushing the stage. The director, the assistant director, stage manager, set designers, all the people backstage were rushing to see what was happening, only to find Hardy Nicholas dead, staring out at the crowd. The last thing he saw and heard was people clapping, overly excited to watch his character die on stage. But that is the irony of living as an actor, because there's no true separation from person and character. At least there wasn't in the final moments of Hardy Nick's life. And with that cheery ass ending, let's head into the middle section, talk about some important things. I'm Kyle. This is Steven. Together we host a show called Boy Meets World. Tell them what we cover on Boy Meets World. Boy Meets World, but that's not all, is it? No. Now we cover life experiences. Ours. Oh, son of a. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just check out the show, please. We really, <laughs> we really need it. Okay, we need a win. Just check us out. We talk about the show Boy Meets World. Each episode of our show, we run parallel for an episode of Boy Meets World where we will examine the show. That's way too much. What happens, you know, our life, how it relates to it, experiences. I can't believe you're still recording. I am recording this. <laughs> Check it out, guys. You'll get some hilarious stories from me and Steven from our childhood. You'll get a great... <laughs> ah, I lost it. Hello and welcome to the middle section where I talk about things and stuff and things and stuff and things and stuff. It's me, Nicholas Howe. You know, you love me. That's why you're here and listening to this podcast. So, it has been one whole year since I started making this podcast. Technically, since I released the first episode of this podcast. I started the pre-pro on this podcast in June 2018, but I didn't do anything with that stuff, except I appeared on, like, four other people's podcasts before I had actually released an episode of my own, specifically talking about death, which is very wild, I guess. I was doing guest spots before my own podcast had ever even launched. That's not why we're here today. Well, it is and it isn't. It gave me a lot of background on how to do certain things that have made the show what it is today. And I thank the people that had me on their shows. Some of them had their podcasts completely canceled and their lives uh, were kind of messed up afterwards. So I'm not going to shout out to their shows because their shows have been taken down. Just know that out there somewhere are several interviews of myself as an expert on comedy and death. <laughs> Back to what we are here for, which is the one year anniversary plus 2,000 followers on Twitter, which is amazing and I'm super hyped for that. So I'm doing a giveaway. What's in the giveaway? How do I enter? These are all the questions that you are asking me and I know. So if you remember quite a few months ago, I did a series of How Will I Die does Dungeons and Dragons. And while I haven't been able to release the module yet because I have been working practically non-stop since I graduated college, and it's been very difficult to write out an entire module, so eventually that'll get done. But if you really want to play it, you can go back, listen to the episode, 
write down all the events that happen, and run it yourself. All of the information is findable in the monster's manual or the player's handbook, the exception of like three or four monsters, but just make up your own shit. I don't care. Live your own life and live your life as best as you can. But since I'm not giving away the module, at least not in this giveaway, I'm going to be giving away a set of dice that was used in the recording of that episode. It was used by the entire table, so we all had our grubby hands on them, and they rolled really well actually so i want to give someone that luck that we had and kind of spread the rpg fun i'm also a huge advocate for giving away dice especially since i literally have 16 sets i believe and i just bought some metal ones that made 16 so i need to get rid of some i need to clear out some space for new dice in the future (laughs) that's a joke i'm not buying any more dice I lie to myself. In addition to the dice, I'm also giving away some stickers and a free secret item that I'm not going to release any information about yet because I want it to be a secret and an actual surprise. So whoever wins the giveaway is going to get a set of dice, some stickers, and then a special secret item. What'll it be? Nobody knows because it's a secret. That's how secrets work. So here's how to enter the giveaway. All you have to do to enter and win this amazing set of things is A, follow my Twitter, and B, like and retweet the pinned post at the top of my Twitter. It will be a link to this episode with the word giveaway in it. All you have to do, retweet the tweet and like it, and then follow me on Twitter. It's at H-W-I-D-I-E-P-O-D. Link is in the description of this podcast. Super easy to find. You can literally type How Will I Die Pod into Google and you'll find the podcast. That's it. That's all you have to do. Just follow and retweet something and you could win a pair of dice, not a pair, a set of dice, some stickers, and a special secret item. So... That's all the housekeeping that I have for this episode. We're going to jump into the history and why I chose these two stories to do. Let's jump on into that. And then we have a fun little spam slam for you and a question and answer segment where you guys sent me questions and I am answering them not on the air, but in this recording and then putting it on the air. I hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to follow, retweet, and like, and... I hope you win. The winner will be announced in two weeks. With all that out of the way, let's head back into the history and the reason that I chose these stories. I'm Michael, the host of the semi-monthly podcast in a city like yours. Join me as I chat with interesting people with interesting life stories. You can listen to the podcast on all major podcast platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. You can follow us on Twitter at IACLYS Podcast, as well as on Facebook and Instagram at In a City Like Yours Podcast. Please feel free to let me know what you think and keep coming back for the many interesting stories in a city like yours. If you've been around pop culture for the last two weeks, you'll know where the first story came from. And it's literally the exact same story of how Mr. Peanut, the planter's peanut mascot, died. Hey, they took a company mascot and literally killed him by dropping him off a mountain and blowing his ass up. I could not believe it when i saw that it was like an actual official thing and by the way the matt and wes from my story are very clearly references to wesley snipes and matt walsh who are just kind of there i thought it was just too funny of a coincidence to pass up the fact that it's kind of unprecedented for a peanut company a nut company to kill off their main mascot although he is rich and a popular saying today is eat the rich so maybe it was for the best because a lot of people would eat mr peanut so that was the that's the whole history and the reason that i chose it i just thought it was the funniest shit that i've seen on the internet in a few weeks and it is just wild to me why mr peanut why'd they kill him what is going on at planters right now where they're just like you know what i'll sell for our super bowl ad killing our mascot off granted we all know he's going to come back to life death isn't permanent for any type of character in comics or cartoons or commercials so he'll be back with a vengeance maybe he'll take on some kind of war on crime or some shit maybe his son pete nut is coming to tax the rich and really literally fight corruption who knows 
It's a weird world. I don't know. I don't write for planters. But I will if they want me to. Hey planters, let me write your next two commercials. I promise you they'll be as big of hits as Killing Mr. Peanut is. Second story is grounded in a much more real reality. And that's because that event actually happened to someone close to that event at least. Gareth Jones was a prominent British actor who in 1958 while actually filming the stage play of I believe Underworld his character is supposed to be having a heart attack and he actually suffered from a heart attack not technically on stage there's no clear direction of where he was when it happened because there are differing reports of where he was and what was happening but at some point between makeup and the stage he collapsed having a heart attack and died on stage now the interesting thing here is that instead of canceling the show because they were recording kind of similar to how SNL does a weekly live show, this was a weekly live performance of a play. They, instead of canceling the show, just kept filming since the character was already supposed to be written out by that point. So there is footage somewhere of this play where they started recording it frantically instead of having the normal camera footage that they had for every show before and pretty much every show after so that's an interesting watch if you can find it online you can google gareth jones and find that information just make sure that you google gareth jones actor because there was another gareth jones who was a journalist who was uh assassinated and that's an interesting story that might inspire a different nick to die but we'll see i don't know what year that was and that's it for the history let's go ahead and jump over to the q a section of this episode where i take fans questions and answer them with answers first question comes from annie and she asks what inspired the podcast so i was doing some research in my undergrad just before i was getting into the nitty-gritty and i had found a few websites that were specifically about the weird ways people died because i was trying to do research on a death in one of the many books that i didn't read in college i found a few sites and i was like wow these are super interesting and so i took those deaths and i really wanted to explore the moments beforehand because when you hear about a death it's sad and all that fun stuff but realistically something had to happen for someone to die a certain way the very first episode of this show the man throwing himself against a window so many times that it knocked the frame out that at its base level has some entertainment value and so I know that there's no podcast like this out there so I had an original idea and I wanted to talk about death a whole lot because I find death a very interesting very under discussed topic so I decided to do How Will I Die I actually didn't choose to do the multiverse of Nyx until literally a few days before I started recording the first episode, uh, which is why I shift back and forth between he and I in that very first episode, which I, I feel like the show has grown from, thankfully. But yeah, that's, that's why I, I was inspired to do it was because there was such cool deaths and such cool ideas out there that weren't being discussed. And also, there are stories out there not being told because they don't exist yet, so I wanted to create them into the ether. Our next question comes from Ryan who asks, do you want to die? I felt like including this question because it is a misconception that I talk about killing these different versions of myself over and over and over and that's some kind of like weird release of me wanting to die but in reality I chose the multiverse thing because it felt wrong to do a story about an actual person's life. So I made it as fictional as possible by turning it against myself. Um, that way I don't get into legal trouble and I also don't get into this weird rewriting of real history. So I really want to emphasize that this is not like a cathartic thing for me. Like I'm not looking for a release from life through telling these dumb stories this is literally just I had a funny idea and I kind of wanted to share it and podcasting is big right now so I figured I would share it through podcasting 
I do think that a lot of people in the world currently do have a lot of emotional issues and do want to die. I do have my own mental health issues, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on because, yeah, it's 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 another topic. I'll just jump into that question. The second part of this question, I guess, is it's from Sean, and Sean asks, are there any deaths that you stay away from? I very specifically stay away from knowledgeable suicides because I'm not trying to glorify death in any way. That's not the point of this podcast. The point of this podcast is to give a death a story, but it's not to highlight how good a death is. So you're not going to hear me talk about someone who's hung themselves uh, on purpose and like wrote a note and blah, 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 because that's not an entertainment value to me at least and to most people. That is a very serious issue that needs to be talked about, but it's not being talked about and I'm not the one to do it. I'm here for a little bit of comedy, a little bit of storytelling, and a little bit of history. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not here to give advice. So I I stay away from things of that nature. Also, I try and stay away from things that are overly graphic. There are a few deaths that I had written down and then decided against doing them because they were they were just too much for a comedy show. Our next question comes from Sue, who asks, are you going to do a musical episode like most podcasts and television shows? So I absolutely plan on doing a musical episode at some point. Here's what needs to happen for that to happen. First of all, it can't be just me. I don't have a good singing voice. I know that. You know that. God knows that. There needs to be someone else with a good singing voice to make me sound better. Even right now, just speaking, my voice is in a range of different notes, I guess, because for some reason, my voice, every time I hit record, my voice decides to turn into a 13-year-old boy's and just starts going like that, which is very annoying. So, yes, musical episode at some point. I've kind of started working on some music. I've kind of thought about the death or deaths that would go into that episode, but nothing is set in stone except for the fact that I very much want to do one. I don't know exactly how that's going to go. Next question comes from my very good friend Kelly, uh, who asks, was there a specific cause of death, like research-wise, that really surprised or freaked you out? For me, I don't get super freaked out about very many deaths, not specifically related to this show as a whole, but for the sub-podcast, the reason I chose a Friday the 13th movie for the very first episode of Would I Survive was because the very first movie that ever freaked me out as a kid was a Friday the 13th movie where Jason shoves someone's face through an RV. And for some reason, that really stuck with me and freaked me out my whole life. And it was even worse because it happened in a bathroom. So then my mind kind of really freaked out about anything having to do with bathrooms. That wasn't a real death. That is the only thing that like I think about freaking me out more than anything else. The thing that really surprises me in recording this podcast is that sometimes when I'm looking at the statistics, statistics are wild, y'all. There's a lot of people that die every year, and just looking at how many people die from a vending machine falling down at them, or a plane crashing, or any of those things, those statistics are incredibly interesting, and I'm not even a math person, like, whatsoever. This one is a joke question, but I figured I'd put it in, because why not? It's from a friend named Adonis, and they ask, what are your thoughts on warrior cats? I don't know if there's deaths in the books, or the comics, or whatever other media there is of Warrior Cats. If you don't know Warrior Cats, it's a YA novel series about cats living their lives in clans and tribes or whatever. Um, I don't know much about it other than some stuff that has been passed on to me from the friend group that Adonis is from, so I don't really care about Warrior Cats. But I will also say they have some cool ass names like Bramble Pelt. That's a cool name. I would name my son that probably. Probably not. The next question comes from Craig and I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier but I'll ask the actual question. Uh, Craig says, you talk about real people's deaths. Does it get awkward when you make jokes about it? And how do you get around that feeling? So there are two things that I make sure of before I start to tell a story. The first is that the person needs to have died a certain number of years before I talk about their death. That's why there's stuff from like the 1900s uh, and 
I think there was one from like 1560 something. That's because, well, A, there are a lot of legalities in talking about people's deaths, fun fact, but B, I don't want to besmirch people's names and talk about, like, again, I don't want to rewrite their history. So that's why, that's the biggest reason why I decided to put myself into their shoes instead of talking about them specifically. I have said sometimes that someone's death is funny, but that is an objective case. There are some deaths in this world that are funny, just objectively. And I don't necessarily feel bad about that. The only time I have felt kind of iffy about a death and joking about it, talking about it, was the Eiffel Tower incident. But that was because I watched the video of the man dying multiple times while I was recording. And as I was recording, I was saying more and more stuff. And I started to feel a little bit guilty, I guess. But then after I was done recording and I went back and watched it, I completely agreed with myself from earlier in the episode where I, it was ironic and irony most of the time is funny. Eric asks, what has been your favorite death so far? For me, choosing a favorite is super hard because there have been so many, especially if you include all the ones from the D&D. There was, I believe, 21 separate deaths in just those six episodes. So it's difficult to choose just one. Each one has its own merits and its own goofs. Um, so I, I really, I just can't choose a favorite one. My favorite death outside of recording a few months ago at the very least was the very first episode that I did, which was the man throwing himself out the window on accident because that was one of the first deaths that made me want to do this show and it was just so off the wall because this man absolutely believed that he was safe throwing his body against a window in a essentially a skyscraper and to have not the window break but the stupid frame around it break that is some kind of weird retribution i guess from the building after taking so much abuse i just that that's the kind of thing that made me love doing a lot of these deaths was because people's actions directly led to these deaths in ironic and comedic ways Haley asks who has been your favorite guest to which i have to legally reply all of them but uh, no, honestly, every single one of the people who have joined me in this podcast has been so amazing. Uh, Abby was the first, so she was my favorite first, technically. And then Nikki, Tower, Johnny, uh, and Vex all made solid appearances, and I loved the episodes that I did with them because this show works much better with other people. And then one of the most amazing things happened when I did the murder mystery episodes, which was two people I had literally met that week agreed to come on as guests. And that was Rob and Nifer or Nifer. And they were just so amazing. And they both played integral parts in the show. And I absolutely like without them stepping up and coming in, especially when I had just lost someone who I had hired to do a part, them stepping up and being like, yeah, we'll help you out was amazing for people that I literally did not know. So every single guest that I've had, Abby, Johnny, Tower, Vex, Nikki, Nifer, Nifer, Rob, all of them have been amazing and I could not ask for more. Also Devin, who made a guest appearance as Ro in the murder mystery. I almost forgot, but I didn't, Devin. I remembered. Also Devin is the one who taught me everything I know about warrior cats, so thanks for that. This last question comes from Travis, who asks, what is your process for recording what is your setup and what is the hardest part? So I'm going to do this uh, just kind of really quickly. My process for recording is literally plug in microphone, headphones, and start Audacity. Pull up the very, very limited amount of notes that I have because, again, I do this fully improv. The only things that I have in front of me are like very, very key notes. So the name of the Nick, here's, here's the literal notes for Cliff Nick. Cliff Nick, 30, entrepreneur, spelled wrong. Cliffside Road, which is the location. And then this is the like description. Mr. Peanut's death, friends Wes and Matt are with him. 
driving around until swerved to avoid an animal plummeting but managing to hold on to a branch sticking out. That's all the notes that I have for that story. And I have even less for Hardy Nick. So I, I really do do this show improvised. As far as my setup, I use my regular laptop that I use for gaming and all that fun stuff, which, by the way, I stream on Twitch, and coming up soon, I'm going to be having a special project that I'm launching with a good friend here in LA. That's a secret for you guys. I also have my microphone, which is a blue snowball. It was a $50 mic, and it works perfectly fine for me. And then I have some headphones that work just plenty well. Uh, and then I use Audacity for editing. And yeah, it works. And then what is the hardest part? I think that there are three parts of the whole process that kind of are difficult. So the first one is with the show being fully improvised, I sometimes have a hard time being more comedically inclined. When I did improv and when I do improv, I feed off the energy of the people around me, which I can use to turn to churn out jokes and make good content. But when I'm by myself, I'm using my own energy. And a lot of the time, especially recently, that energy is much more lessened. Another hard thing is that I keep getting extremely sick. Like half of my episodes are recorded with me having a stuffy nose. And I'm also recording at like three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning every time or almost every time. And I tend to get like a runny nose at that time. But it's the only time that I have free that there's no loud noises, no vacuuming, no dogs, no nothing around me. So I have quiet space and quiet time for myself. And then the last thing that's the hardest part, which is kind of why I saved it for last, is I have depression. So sometimes I go into a spiral and it gets really difficult to talk about death and kind of make jokes and stuff like that when I'm feeling not so great about myself. So that's why there are really long stints between episodes sometimes is because when I do have the energy I don't have the time or the ability to record because loud noises and just like ridiculous situations that I keep getting into which is why one of the episodes I recorded literally while I was walking six miles home from work because I had that time and the energy and I just figured why the hell not so that's that those are the hardest things is like trying to get the energy to do the podcast and it's not that I don't love doing it it's just that it's it's a it's a health problem that granted is not very taken care of and that's a lot of my own fault but it's something that I'm working through and something that I need to fix in order to make the show better and to make myself better but what can you do I guess so yeah that is actually going to end the Q&A for us on that very very happy note so thank you guys all for submitting questions i saw a few more questions after i got everything set up so those are going to have to wait until the future when i do another q a episode thank you guys for joining and checking out the podcast we're going to move straight into the spam slam and finish this off with some comedy Welcome to the Spam Slam. This week we're going to be looking at an email that I received under the subject line Hello from Miss Donna Louise. And because this is a special episode, I was really feeling Donna Louise in my soul. So, let's let her read it. Dear friend, I am glad to know you, but God knows you better and he knows why he has directed me to you at this point in time. So do not be surprised at all. My names are Miss... Donna Louise McGinnis, a widow. I have been suffering from the cancer disease. At this moment, I am about to end the race like this because the illness has gotten to a very bad stage without any family members and no children. I hoped that you will not expose or betray this trust and confidence that I am about to entrust on you for the mutual benefit of the orphans and the less privileged ones. I have some funds I inherited from my late husband, the sum of 11 million, 11 million dollars, deposited in the bank. Having known my present health status, I decided to entrust this fund to you, believing that you will utilize it the way I am going to instruct herein. Therefore, I need you to assist me and reclaim this money and use it for charity works, for orphanages, and give justice and help to the poor, needy, and promote the words of God in the effort 
that the house of God will be maintained, says the Lord. Jeremiah 22:15. It will be my pleasure to compensate you with 35% percent of the total money for your personal use. 5% percent for any expenses that may occur during the international transfer process, while 60% of the money will go to the charity project. All I require from you is sincerity and ability to complete God task without any failure. It will be my pleasure to see that the bank has finally released the transfer and the fund into your bank account therein, your country, even before I die here in the hospital. Because of my present health status, everything need to be process rapidly as soon as possible. I am waiting for your immediate reply, if only you are interested for the further details of the transaction and execution of the charitable project. Best regards, your friend, Ms. Donna Louise McInnes. Oh, Donna. Just a real quick note, I don't think that a widow should be part of your name, but also sucks that you're dying. If you want to give me $11 million, you can send it in a check or Venmo it to me. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to the orphans. No problem. No problem. So I guess I don't have to do the podcast anymore because I'm a millionaire. And that's going to do it for this week's episode of How Will I Die? Starring Nicholas Howe. It's been me, Nicholas Howe, talking about death and fun stuff and answering questions for you guys. Happy one year anniversary. I guess birthday for the show. It's been a good year and I expect the next few years to go really well as well. Thanks for listening. And remember, death is coming, so why worry about the inevitable? Focus on the possibilities. Five minutes till they pull the switch. They say you'll only feel an itch. But they watch the catatonic twitch and the smoke that flows around you. They're beneath the gamma rays. Watch my soul just burn away. Or don't you even try to pray my fate is predetermined. You won't see me returning and save your stories.